Hello everyone, welcome again back to Afro Rooted. My name is Agan Superhan and I'm up here with Anna. Anna, what's up? How's it going? How's it going, man? You know, another day, another Afro Rooted. Excited oh to God. be here, man. I know it's kind of been it's been long. It's been a minute. It's been a, it's been a while since we were back here, but we're back again. We're gonna cover again some really great topics. There's been some great football this week and last weekend. Uh, Champions League roundup, Inter Milan, Liverpool, Real Madrid, PSG. Ooh la la. Uh, we got the Manchester Derby. You know, uh, Maris kind of sinking United, uh, but we'll give that its fair share. Carl Toko and Kambi as well, uh, lighting it up in Ligue 1. Uh, in the four one the defeat of uh Lorient and uh yeah, yeah. And many more we'll just cover it. But yeah, Kana, where do you want to start? Uh, I think the PSG game was the most recent game. Uh it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We had two yeah, uh Afro rooted yeah. boys. Yeah. Yeah, PSG game, man. Like that was a a really great game to watch. You know, I feel like this is been it's like the third time they the romontada happened to psg mm. like, uh, <laughs> i'm not a psg fan so it's like for me it's like man it's like whatever <laughs> yeah like you know i feel like um you know psg is a great example of uh why money cannot buy you everything you know <laughs> they literally spent a lot of money uh this summer i mean i guess they got some people for free but they arguably have one of the best teams in the world uh, on paper and uh you know, and Real Madrid is not really at their best currently, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Karim Benzema took it away, bro. <laughs> uh, Karim the dream. It's, uh, you know, for P for PSG, you know, they this past summer, they made some great signings. They brought, you know, a lot of seasoned winners from Sergio Ramos, uh, Leo Messi, Donnarumma, uh, Wijnaldum, Hakimi. And like, these guys have all won for trophies. They, they know what it takes to win. And you would think that, you know, that curse or the failure to progress and go to that next level would go away. Um, and I think someone even said to me is this probably is the most is the worst like exit they've had compared to all the years, because maybe Barcelona one could be could be up there. But it was worse because they were in control. I don't know if you remember in the second half, they're just kind of passing it around. They were, you know, they, they had them. And then the mistake that Don Ruma they did, but made, yeah, uh, Don Ruma's mistake definitely, uh, I think, played a, a big factor there too, because it shows you that, like, you know, they, it was like in the, I think they lost it mentally. You know, it's like they they basically gave it away. It's not that, uh, uh, yeah, granted that uh, Real Madrid took it took their uh, the chances while they had it, but I feel mm -hmm. like PSG pretty much blew the game. They gave it away because they weren't uh, mental, like mentally, they were like, oh, we got this in the bag, you know, and then. That's not how football works, man. You got to, it's not over till the fat lady sings, as they say, man. And, uh, you know, I think it was a great example of that. But Kareem, oh my God, still kicking at 34. Uh, did you expect that at all? I mean, maybe yes, he would have scored, but the performance he to, to put be in. Honest, I didn't expect the hat trick for him, but to be honest with you, I've, I've always been saying this. I think uh, Kareem Benzema was one of the most underrated players on earth because mm -hmm. i feel like uh his time at real madrid like he he came in same time as ronaldo so i feel like most for the most part of his career like he, uh, he was overshadowed by ronaldo you know but like people didn't really see like they didn't really give him his props you know like i was watching a couple of documentaries about him as well like a couple on netflix and one on i think on youtube i think i know i think i know which one you're talking really about understand. Yeah, I, think I've seen know, that I feel like he, he's one of the most like under uh, misunderstood characters. He also had like you know the uh, issues with like the French national team that happened with him and Valbuena. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go into details here. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I feel like all all, all that like played a factor, and uh, I feel like uh, he's finally getting his flowers, you know. And uh, it's like uh, the older he gets, the better. He's like he's he's aging like uh, good wine, you know. <laughs> In, indeed, he's definitely he put three goals. He has, I think, seven or eight goals for this season's Champions League so far. He's, uh, you know, he's taken up the mantle ever since. I think, you know, you talk about being in the shadow of Cristiano Ronaldo, and you know, to some degree, yeah, because Ronaldo was the star of that show, but he stayed with there and he worked in that front three with Ronaldo. And now that Ronaldo's gone, 
since 2018. It's been, what, almost four seasons since he's taken up that mantle and, and responsibility. You know, mm-hmm. he hasn't shied down. He's been, you know, arguably their best player. Maybe Modric yep. could be up there as well. Arguably yeah. their best player those last four seasons. Um, and he, he's and the I, captain now, right? If I'm not mistaken, like he captained them in the in the PSG game at least. I believe so. Yeah, I believe he he was a captain in that game. Um, yeah. But as a show, yeah, he's you know he's he's the leader of that team. Why? Do, and it, there's no surprise that he uh, Didier Deschamps brought him back to the French national team. Mm-hmm. Uh, he probably thinks like, damn, maybe I should have brought him sooner. It's <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah he yeah. deserves. You're right. He deserves his flowers. He doesn't uh, get enough. But someone who maybe. Had his flowers and maybe is losing them, Leo Messi. Uh, it was kind of sad to kind of see him and just his decline. Uh, you know, I, I forgot that. But, you know, Luka Modric maybe kind of stole the show and Messi was just kind of in his shadow. Well, what do you think? You know, you're a midfielder. How much did you appreciate Luka Modric's uh, performance? Like, uh, against PSG, I mean, he was, it was top, top performance, you know, and uh, not just him, but I, I want to say also like Vinicius is another mm. uh, was another key player in that game. I, I want to say that's uh, you know, obviously uh, Vinicius uh, at first was like you know, there was a lot of hype when he first came up, you know, like everybody was expecting him to be the next best thing, and then right after that he got a lot of criticism. But I feel like he's still a young player that's uh, about to develop. And uh, what a great time for him to develop as well, because there isn't a lot of, uh, I mean, there is competition, but uh, they don't have the Galactico team to, or, or so to speak of. So I feel like it's a great environment for him to grow into. And uh, having players like Benzema, Modric, you know, all these uh, legends is going to help him. But um, to b- bring it back to your question with Modric, is, you know, Modric is performance is what i expect from modric because he's also he's shown us that he's a world-class player you know and you know that assist against benzema was uh, another uh, like proof to that you know? Oof. it's uh definitely is so real madrid so psg go not uh, go flying out of the champions league and real madrid joined manchester city Bayern munich and liverpool uh, as well any of those teams you wanted to mention or talk about real quick um, to be honest, like, uh, focusing, like, but bringing it back to our Afro-rooted, uh, segment, I feel like it was a very slow week for African players this week. So, mm. you know, like, especially in the Champions League, like, we didn't get, oh, yeah. uh, you know, most, <laughs> Mo, Mo, Mo Salah and Mares, you know, I mean, both their teams went, uh, went through, but I don't think they really had, like, a productive, you know, uh, Champions League, uh, week to speak of, but, um, Hopefully next week we'll have uh, Anthony Langa with United and uh, Sebastian Aller, the afro rooted favorite. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, hopefully they, they'll uh, give us something to talk about next week. But uh, yeah, um, for me, like the standout game was the Real Madrid game. And uh, one thing I want to mention as well, like with the Real Madrid game and like Karim Benzema and Kylian Mbappe being like the, you know, the only scorers of both legs. Uh, you know, this shows you, this shows me like, you know, like what could have been in Africa, you know, because they're both, uh, they both have Algerian uh, descent and he all, uh, Kylian Mbappe also has uh, Cameroonian roots, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, man, I want to see more of these players play for <laughs> our national teams, you know, and I feel like, um, yeah, I, I want to see that moving forward. It's a, uh... It's a frightening thing. It's a very interesting thing when you, like, you know, the players maybe their descent or heritage or maybe who were born in those nations, uh, and if they had stayed with their, uh, if they had, if they had maybe played for those African teams. I remember, I don't know if you remember that segment that Trevor Noah did in 2018. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, anything, yeah, <laughs> and the French ambassador making a comment or going yeah. back and forth. Uh, you're right, man. It literally could be like a lot of these African nations could have uh, could have uh, like ridiculous uh, starting lineups or just t- teams. We you know the players we we obviously know them. But yeah. uh, let me just play devil's advocate. Do you think that's kind of like a dangerous route to go or to say, or not really? Like, cause I think what, what I'm, do you do you me- in terms of like you know I was trying to remember that uh, what what I I, I kind of forgot the comments that uh that French, uh, the ambassador made to Trevor Noah or saying that 
it's uh, uh i think it was something along the lines where yeah basically you know they're all french like we're inclusive and all that and for, i mean one thing i would say is like you know f- mm-hmm. for players like you don't know how they feel so i i don't you know, obviously, I'm, I'm going to be biased when I say I want them to play for African teams because that's our interest. That's our show, literally. But, uh, I mean, I, I would understand why some players would not, like, they might not feel connected to their roots as much, you know? Like, if you grow up in one place, like, who are we to say that they're more connected to this place or that place? But, I mean, they also get, I feel like the these national teams don't do enough to... Uh, you know, they only want them when they win, it seems like, you know what I mean? It's like when you win your French or when you win your English. And then we even saw it with, in the Euros recently. That, oh, yeah. Um, you can, uh, you know, right I, there. Whenever they lose, <laughs> yeah, like, oh. whenever they lose, it's like, yo. Go back home what? or some, yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. You see racist comments. It's like England had, hadn't been in the, in the Euro the finals, finals forever. And literally this generation where you have, you know, arguably a lot of people from, you know, African and Caribbean descent now they finally make it but you don't since they didn't win like they're not uh you know patriotic enough for all this so i feel like there's always a double standard that's there and it's like if you if that if the you know if the people and you're not respected in those national teams i know for a fact that if they played an african team they made it to the quarterfinals even you know like people would give them their flowers you know there'll be legends in those teams and i feel like they'll be well respected so that that's where usually like why i'm so like a pro like you know uh like for Af- players of african descent that's why i want them to play in africa because i feel like they would get um uh, the respect they deserve from the from there but again you know uh it's, it's how they feel like uh, you know you, we don't know these players and you don't know how they might feel connected to a country or not so you know it's very difficult to say that way but th- that's why i stand where i stand you know trevor noah to get one quote he said He says, when I'm saying they're African, I'm not trying to exclude them from their Frenchness, but include them in my Africanness. And that's that's a good point. Maybe uh, I can't speak too much for the, in in the U.S. Actually, I guess I could, but I guess in French, it's like you're either French or Algerian. There's no such thing as French Algerian or French Cameroonian. It's just one or the other. Whereas maybe here in the States, it's like people will celebrate that, 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 that heritage, you know? There are people like, yeah. I think it's Christian P- Pulisic, for example, and I could be wrong, but he taught he his family he has some roots with Croatia or Czech Republic. Heck, that was that was yeah, even yeah. how he he got that connection to go to Dortmund. Mm-hmm. And I imagine there are some people definitely would celebrate it or acknowledge it. I could I could be wrong, but yeah, uh, yeah I think you know I I'm also just playing devil's advocate with that. Yeah. You know, with the England thing. And, you know, the Euros, that was the number one thing I was thinking about. As soon as those guys, like, you know, they missed those penalties, I knew what was going to come. I, I, I could already foresee it. And it was just like, damn, like, not that, like, obviously you missed the penalties, whatever. And you're right, they, mm-hmm. these guys did so much. But I knew that there was just a racist barrage of just about to come towards these guys. Yeah. For the it's national like, you know, teams. Even the fact that we expect this as something by itself, you know what I mean? It's like we don't even need to go deep into it, but like, well, you know, we like I feel like a lot of us expected all the stuff that came, and the fact that that's become normal, I feel like is more the issue, you know. And I don't know, man. Like moving forward, it's just you know, yeah, go go somewhere you wanted, man, and celebrate it. That's that's the yeah, yeah. Saying, you know? But there was a about that, man. <laughs> yeah no no for sure we can definitely yeah. we'll definitely have maybe a special or have a yeah. more of a nuanced uh, conversation this is definitely so- something that we shouldn't take lightly and we should dive deep into like a different episode as well like, yeah because yeah make a, make a series out of this man <laughs> no yeah for sure it's good because it goes into cultural nuances the idea of nationality yes. identity so no for yeah. sure um, it also goes beyond football so you yeah, know, these are something that, that should be you know, considered. No, no, that's for sure, for sure. But so I guess we're moving on from uh, the Champions League, go back to this uh, past weekend's performance, Manchester Derby, Manchester City four, Manchester United one. Uh, oh, well. Yeah, oof. we're both well, Man United fans, so it's a bit tough. It's heavy topic. This is also <laughs> this it's is tough to for bring us. it up, even. But you know what I mean, like. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing that got me going is that, you know, our Afro-rooted player performed good. So, you know, it's yeah. bittersweet, you know. 
Uh, I more. mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I had Kevin De Bruyne in my fantasy team, so I was like, ah, well, you know, it's not all lost yeah. today. <laughs> but, uh, but let's uh, yeah. But but Mares, yeah, he doesn't Mahrez, start. Yeah. But how does he? You know, how does how is he, he able he to perform? He came on and ba- basically sealed the the game for Man City. I think. Um, you know, I, obviously he he scored the last two goals, but like the first goal that he scored was just I feel like just amazing. And uh, you know, he's uh, he's at the right place, right time. He doesn't get picked up by the defenders. He's by himself outside the box and. I think it was just a really nice finish by him. And, you know, I feel like he's performing at a top level right now, you know, C- comes in, does what's expected of him and doing it in a derby too. two goals in a derby is not an easy thing to achieve, you know, and both him and uh, De Bruyne achieved that. So, you know, I feel like he was one of the Afro-rooted players that had uh, one of the, I feel like, uh, top performances. And, How would you... Uh, so I guess I'm looking at so this season he's one of the top goal scorers for Man City. He may be the top goal scorer. He has 21 goals in all competitions and seven assists in all competitions. The vast majority of them coming in the Premier League. Ten goals and four mm-hmm. assists. Um, obviously now he's the designated penalty taker as well. Uh, yeah. You know, Man, Man City like, did struggle with penalties, you know, but becoming top scorer with Man City is great because I feel like Man City in general as a team. They're a very, like, attacking team. We know their style. You know, Pep Guardiola's football. Mm-hmm. And I feel like since they're a very attacking team and they don't have a striker, I feel like it is easy for the wingers and the midfielders, for everybody to get on the score sheet, and they score a lot of goals. So I feel like being on that team will allows you to, to score a lot of goals, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, whereas, um, I mean, if you go to Liverpool, obviously Mo Salah does score a lot of goals, but he's expected to do that. That's kind of his role. You know what I mean? He's the goal scorer. Whereas Man City is like everybody's on the score sheet, you know, they're still looking for a, a main striker, but they don't have that. So a lot of people get on the score sheet and they score a lot as a team in general. So I feel like that also has to do with, uh, you know, with uh, Mahrez's performance. Like Mahrez does not start all these games, but he scores a lot. Like, you, you know, that's how Man City is. It's like they rotate their players and everybody comes in and boom, you know, they gets themselves in uh, get, uh, on the score sheet. And it's like, it's a very demanding environment that mm-hmm. uh, Pep Guardiola has. And, you know, a lot is expected from you week in, week out, day in, day out. So it's like, boom, like you're not performing, you're out. You know, it's like, it's heavy competition that's happening. Someone could easily replace you and that team. That's a luxury that Pep Guardiola 100%. has. And and mm-hmm. Riyad Mahrez, you know, he was he was the best player at Leicester when they won the Premier League back in 2016, mm-hmm. and then yeah. now it looks like he's, you know, close competition to being one of the best players. Um, but he doesn't play that much, like you said. So yeah. I know it's kind of depends on the person and who they are. But how would you feel? Would you, if you're someone like, let's say, yeah, him like Mahrez or Sterling, who you're not starting as other, maybe, if if you are on a, on a different team. But you're playing your role, and your ha- and your role is important. How would you how would you feel about that, or what's your thought thoughts thoughts on that? I mean, definitely, as a, I feel like as a player, you want to play more. You know what I mean? Because that's mm-hmm. what you do. That's what you're there for. But I mean, in Man City's case, I feel like, or in Mahrez's case, it's like it's not stopping him from getting you know scoring his goals. He does play a good role within the teams because it's, it's not like he's not playing at the same time. Does that make sense? He, the, mm, the team yeah. might not be depending solely on him, but he is a key factor in that. And then they're winning trophies, like we're saying. So it's like, I mean, I guess like uh, I wouldn't mind being in that team, but after a while you might like get tired of it or not. So it just depends on the mentality you have and, uh, you know, the relationship with the team and your coach. It's like, it just depends on how the club is selling that to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, at the same time, like you wouldn't mind being on the bench for top players. You know what I mean? It's like literally everybody is a top player. So it's like, it's just a fact that does you could only put a field eleven players. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it comes with the territory. You know? No, that's for sure. I think it all it's all very dependent. You know, I see Mohamed Salah whenever he gets subbed off, he's always upset. But I was also mm-hmm. thinking, like, dang, you're so lucky you get to play this many minutes, like. I exactly. mean, even Sa- even Sadio gets uh, <laughs> Sadio Mane gets subbed off a lot more than you do, um, yeah. but uh, 
maybe those players are not a fit for that kind of team. You know, it's like so, some players feel like they need to play a lot. And I understand that too, because that's, that's what you like to do. You want to be there and do your best, play all play all the time. And if that's the case, you know, find yourself a team like Liverpool that, you know, that's, that's wow. good, but it also depends on you, you know? Yeah. Liverpool have also been, they're getting closer and closer. I think they're only three points away, uh, six points away with the game in hand. I think people are saying April 10 is going to be a date for uh, that big clash, uh, Liverpool versus Man City, uh, when those two teams meet at the Etihad. Uh, so far, how do you how do you rate the performance? Let's talk about Liverpool real quick. Uh, how do you rate the performance of Liverpool and their main men, uh, Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane? Liverpool, man, uh, I mean, you know, I, I feel like, if it was like a de- in December or something like we we had written off everybody else like we thought like City was gonna yeah. run away with the trophy and I feel I like from, yep, yep. From, <laughs> from then yeah from then till now like Liverpool has done a great job in closing the gap and you know Sadio Mane and uh, Mo Salah coming back from the Afcon it seemed like they were just fired up you know it's like they they came in with a fresh energy like extra energy. And I could, I, I guess you could also say like you could also see how Liverpool depends on these two players because Afcon like literally they both went to the finals so him including Nabi Keita as well that mm-hmm. uh, that went to the, those three I think yeah I think it was those three yeah Nabi Keita those, those yeah, three but, but but Mo Salah and Sadio Mane have I feel like more impact and they also went to the finals so you could see that uh, Liverpool was really missing them, you know, like that and that month, like, you know, like Boxing Day was was during that time. Oh, no, was yeah. it? No, sorry. It was that, it was, it was that January it. period. Yeah. January. Up until but, you know, that January period. February 14. Where, like, yeah. They, they played double the games. They played, <laughs> you know, they, and, and Liverpool, for some reason, I don't think didn't have any breaks as well. Like, well, some some teams like, you know, how they still have, uh, you know, games to be played. I think Liverpool had like games back to back, and then they were not ha- they didn't have these players. So I feel like that that was one of the factors why they were lagging behind. So now I feel like they're caught up in the race, and uh, uh, it's a fair game after this. You know, this uh, only what six points, three points. It changes every yeah. time, but like they're they're not that far behind from City, and one loss from City, you know, or and then you know a couple of losses here, a couple of draws here, and then the, they have they face each other. So. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, the, I feel like you know it's anybody's game right now. Like I'm definitely, uh, I would definitely say it's a two horse race still, but uh, it's not um, a city runaway. You know. No, no, that's for sure. I remember that period too, where that early January, February, and everyone's making a big deal, saying like, "Oh my God, like they're gonna be out with these guys." Heck, I I thought the same thing as well, but uh, they had players like step up, like. Origi, I remember one game where he stepped up. Uh, Minamino kind of started playing well. Jota had the biggest influence, I believe. The team was very, very settled and still stable without them. Um, and also, if you remember, like it was a period where like a lot of players were getting COVID, so matches were just getting postponed. Like mm-hmm. I Burnley, they could tell you, they could write a book about how many games were uh, <laughs> postponed for those guys. Um, but you're right. I think they were able to. When they came back, you see the impact and how much they're they're much more dominant. Heck, yeah. even the chances against Inter Milan, I mean, they didn't score anything, but they easily could have scored three or four. Both Mane and Salah had so many chances against uh, Inter Milan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. I feel like yeah. we covered most of the stuff today, man. There's a lot, yeah. not a lot uh, going on within the uh, afro rooted community, but um, I guess we have... Um, I think two weeks time the World Cup qualifiers coming up, so I think we're planning mm-hmm. an episode. Hopefully next week, uh, at least at the time of this recording, uh, I feel like we're planning on doing a, an episode for that, right? Like we're gonna do an overview. Oh yeah, big and, lead up. Yeah, so like, uh, yeah. Let us know also in the comments if you want to know anything about that in specific. And yeah, um, it's gonna yeah, be so interesting. The big games that we'll be covering for sure. Uh, during this period, we've got uh, obviously the big one that we're all watching is the uh, uh, Senegal versus Egypt. You know, Ooh. oof, I know, right? Oof, didn't, didn't that just happen? That that, that kind of happened uh, recently. I know. I'm, I'm to be honest, it's just like I feel like it's like, again, it's a bittersweet. <laughs> like you know, it's like you want both teams to play in a World Cup. You know, it's like because obviously you want the best representation for Africa, but I mean, only one of them can go through. So. 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's gonna uh, be tough. I think in that topic is what we're we're also going to discuss about how a lot of these teams maybe like there's not enough places for African teams, and then um, yeah, you know because uh, World Cup some because yeah. like again some of the other Especially notable games are the level that African football has reached right now. I feel like we definitely can make a case for ourselves saying that uh, you know we need more players in the World Cup. But we also, I feel like, need to increase the level of performance within the World Cup because I feel like last World Cup was very to play devil's advocate. Like we haven't been playing mm. that well. I mean, Senegal's uh, elimination in last World Cup was a bit unlucky because it was by literally it was like a they had the same place as Colombia or was it Poland? Yeah, but they had. It was. They were with, out I think also with Japan. Discipline. Yeah, but they were out because of discipline. Like they really had. Uh, it was like they had more yellow cards or something. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it came down to. It came uh, down to like a, you know, a stupid yellow card. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Especially in the World Cup, like every point, Matt, like a draw is important. Like, score as many goals as you can. Like, it's any, and especially if you're like in a competitive group. Like, I think that group was Poland, Japan, Colombia, and Senegal. Yeah. And, and I, think I feel they like lost their well, opening game, but they arguably they were all like equal level. I would say, you know. Yeah, would I, I feel like maybe Senegal and Colombia were like I feel like the, a little bit more up there, you know. Yeah. But obviously you can't write off Poland because they also have Lewandowski, yeah, top striker in the world. So you know, I don't think they made it through though. You know what? Poland didn't. Poland also failed to qualify. It was just Colombia and Japan. Colombia and Japan, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, because Japan played against Belgium, and yeah, they had that crazy game. <laughs> true, oh. true. That's true. But I remember like. Uh, it being like super like unfair almost for Senegal, but like, yeah, hopefully they what... make it, man, so they could uh, redeem themselves. <laughs> no, they do. I have champions of Africa. I, I don't. I, I. They deserve to be there, but at the expense of Egypt, who's also like a quality team, a quality yeah. tournament team. It it seems unfair. I mean, let alone that uh, Egypt. Uh, and so Senegal. It's either, also... it's either Sa- Sadio Mane or Mo Salah in the World Cup. It's not going to be both. So. Yeah, I don't know. That's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be sad for one of the players because, you know, they're really at their prime right now. Like, next World Cup is not going to cut it for either. So, no. there's that to and think then, about as well. Yeah, because then even, even Egypt didn't have the best World Cup last year. The last uh, in Russia yeah. wasn't too tough. But the other games to mention real quick, Cameroon versus Algeria. That's also going to be a crazy mm-hmm. matchup. Mali versus Tunisia. Ghana, Nigeria. <laughs> Again, ha- ha- Damn. <laughs> And uh, I think Democratic Republic of Congo versus Morocco. And I think Congo's actually had a, a great qualifying campaign. So, again, like, yeah. uh, the next episode, and, it's going to uh, be a like lot we of... Said, uh, I think we mentioned the last episode, but we have they have Nkonku convinced and <laughs> ready. He's to ready. For them, uh, you know, so that's uh, great news for them, you know. Hopefully they get more of these players and, you know, stack up their team. So, yeah. so it's not, it's not going to be an easy uh, roundup, you know. No, yeah, I'm just kind of looking at them like, yeah, this is actually kind of unfair. This is uh, these yeah. players are all these players deserve to <laughs> to go. We but... need at least at least nine African teams in the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, the next world and the, for sure the next World Cup that's gonna happen. But again, for me talking about all these topics, uh, the next episode. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. It was uh, as always, as if it's a pleasure. To, great to episode, man. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Everyone have a great weekend. Uh, wait, before I do, anything else you want to add, Kana? Anything else you want to... Nah, man, uh, just uh, thank you for following us, for the people that have been watching us. And yeah, if you like our content, don't forget to like, comment, share, you know, subscribe, all that good stuff.